go. We're now live streaming, getting ourselves ready for Board and Busters for Pets. So I hope that you're all going to enjoy learning some fun, easy things to do with your pets to make their lives happier and more interesting. So we'll just, ah, there we go. We have got people coming into class. There's Grisha coming into class. So you are now host. Thank you, James. Let me make you a co-host. Um, there we go. Recording right. the sound. Thank you. Hi, You're Grisha. Welcome. Lovely to have you in class. Um, Thank you. Oh, that looks a lovely picture you've got there of you. Uh, that's excellent. Uh, very Thank nice you. to see the see the two of you in the picture. Where um, are you that, from with your beautiful accent? I'm actually from South Africa, but oh, I live in Perth, Australia at the moment. I've been here oh. for three years, but oh, I've lovely. still very much got my South African accent. Beautiful, <laughs> um, beautiful. Uh, I am I'm still very much South African. So, yes, uh, I have my South African accent that goes with it. Where are you from, Grisha? Albuquerque, New Mexico. New Mexico. Okay. Yeah. And what is the time there now? It's 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Okay. And, and trust me, since I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, it's way past my bedtime. So I'm ah. doing everything to keep awake. Well, I will quite understand if you go to sleep. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, that that is that is a long long day. It's, it seems sort of something like my my day. I I get up at, at the latest at six and I work till midnight. So. You do? <laughs> Yeah, oh I teach God. until midnight uh, uh, on, a, on a different platform. I teach uh, English. What so, time? Are, what time is it where you are? Ten o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I am I'm, I'm a little ahead of you in, in time, uh, to put it mildly. There is due to be somebody else in class, but I'm not going to wait. I'm going to start to share, um, and then we can talk and, and come in and out as we go along. We've got James with us today, so that if there's any problems or anything that um, you, you need to ask him as far as um, technical goes, James is my TA for the day. Thank you, James, for being TA. I really, I really appreciate it. Um, and he will he's great on putting extra little things in as well. So that is awesome. Uh, please feel free to leave your microphone on because it makes it fun for us to be able to chat together as we go. So I'm hoping by the end of, of today's session, your cat or dog, what have you got, a cat or a dog? Are you talking to me? Yes. Yes, I have two little dogs and, and neither of them are feeling their best. And that's one of the reasons I get up at four o'clock because I have in the morning, I have to give them medicine. So I'm very likely won't be on very long, but I thought I would just check it out for future. So you'll understand. That, you'll understand. Yes, I fully understand. And you can get a, a recording afterwards of it. So Thank that you. if anything you miss, it, it is, it's available for you for Thanks. that. Thank you very uh, much. What, what kind of dogs do you have? I have a, a little miniature schnauzer and I have a chihuahua. Oh, yeah. beautiful. I've got two little dogs too. I've got two um, French bulldogs. Um, oh, they're darling. They're so they, cute. They, they're very cute and, and very, they are, are very, very sweet. So they are um, able to do things like that so yeah I love my two little ones well let's have a look and see we we learn from each other and um, when we people come in on live stream they join they need to join us and register if they want to take part a little about me I live in Perth Australia I've been here for three years. I moved here after living in South Africa for 63 years. And um, I've been an educator all my life. But now on Get Set Up, I'm no longer an educator. I share information and I talk to my peers. And for me, that is really awesome. 
I love creating and making things, particularly puzzles. And I've got a great love of animals. That's why I do my animal series on uh, African animals, Australian animals, wildlife encounters. And this week I've got a coffee hour on birds in my garden. So those are all uh, interesting things that, that oh. I do. It's wonderful Very. and good to know. Great. <laughs> all right. My objective today is to make toys for cats and dogs and hamsters and gerbils and birds. The only reason I did it as cats and dogs was I did it alphabetically because I love both cats and dogs. So uh, I couldn't make up my mind. So I went alphabetically. But a lot of the cat things you can do with the dogs as well. My dogs love to play with a lot of the things um, that I set out to do with cats and ended up being doggy things as well. So there are all sorts of things and ways to while away the hours with your pets. Um, so let's oops, see. Oh, there comes somebody coming to join us as well. That's awesome. Um, now, today we're starting with a, the most simple of ways of doing what we do. Hi, how are you today? She's coming. She's coming. <laughs> All right. Um, what, what we are doing uh, today is we're starting with things that you have in your home so that you can make things for your Hi, Natalie. Lovely to have you back in class. Um, Hi, we're, making, we're making things uh, out of toilet rolls. Toilet rolls are the most wonderful things to make things from. Now, if you're worried about toilet rolls having germs, you take them and you put them in the oven for 20 minutes on the lowest heat. It gets rid of any germ that might ever have been there and you can then use your toilet rolls. Um, we're making simple, simple things today for your cat to be able to play with. We can just simply take a toilet roll and you just cut the ends of the toilet roll and they play with those. My dogs play with this as well. They also enjoy pushing it around. Unfortunately, with their teeth, they don't last very long because they will munch into it. You can take a toilet roll and cut it into strips and then put some food inside or a bell inside. And all you do is you put the difference, you slide the strips into each other. And then they can push it around. I put food in for my dogs and they love it. They spend ages pushing it around and sniffing at it. Uh, my, I used my, my son's, where my son lives, there's a cat. I used their cat for it and they love the bell and they love the food. So literally you just take a single piece of your toilet roll, cut, it, cut your toilet roll into strips, and then you feed the other pieces into the toilet roll. And then you wiggle them a little and they make a ball. And it really is a great ball to play with. Natalie, what have you got? Have you got cats or dogs? I don't have any pets, but I want me a little puppy. Well, there's lots of things for puppies just now. So okay. be patient, they're coming. <laughs> okay. Now, another one you can do is you can take fluffy balls and stick them on a toilet roll. They love to play with that. They grab it, they push it, they pull it. Or you can put bells onto a toilet roll. And that my dogs like. They push the bell around. They enjoy pushing the bell around. As I say, eventually it gets eaten. Um, so uh, they are, a, are not able to, um, they, with the eating of it, they, they, it doesn't last as long as it should. So um, what we do have is, I uh, just want to go to speak of you quickly. So you've got your, all you do is you thread um, your bells through with cotton. And it doesn't matter if they're a little bit away from the the thing or they're close by because they rattle and that's what attracts both dogs and cats and people who have birds as well. Um, these little bubbles, balls are wonderful on there. They just uh, lovely to play with, lovely to feel. Dogs chew them off unfortunately. And then just showing you again this one where you've taken your roll and you've cut it into pieces and then put your pieces inside so that they are done. You can also take 
Uh, I use pipe cleaners, but you can use straws as well. Just thread them through. And dogs think they are an insect and they push them around thinking they're an insect because every time you touch one side, the other side wiggles. And so both dogs and cats, cats particularly enjoy this, but dogs do as well if they're small dogs. The little puppy dogs, your little puppy Natalie would love this if you've got a little puppy because they, they and then all I would do is I would tie knots at the end here so that they can't come out and be chewed. So I knot it there and I would knot it there and then it can't come out. Uh, and then they would be able to play and chew on it and have a lot of fun. And you can twist it and you can really make it into interesting shapes. And as I say, every time you touch one, a whole lot of other ones wiggle as well. Right. So those are just a few of those fun ideas. You can also make a box, put um, some noisy toys in it. Uh, put food in it and the dogs and the cats spend ages sniffing and smelling and trying to get them out of the box. Keeps them very fit. Now for a cat, a cat likes to scratch and it goes on your furniture and you don't want that. So you can make a variety of cat scratches. Uh, the one I love is just your scrubbing brush and put a scrubbing brush against uh, a chair a table leg now I've got a dog that loves to be tickled and rubbed and I am considering trying to do that and see if he will start scratching himself on that uh, and because he's a great scratcher so maybe he will be able to use it for himself but I haven't put it up yet but you can use cardboard. Rolled cardboard is wonderful for them to scratch on. Um, putting different kinds of fabric onto a board and just put it above the ground where they can stand up and scratch to their heart's content. And also you can take old pieces of PVC. Um, what I used to do was when I had my cat, I would go around to where there were building sites and the, to the rubbish heap, to the rubble heap and find bits of PVC tubing that people were no longer, they'd cut the off cuts off. And then I would ask them, can I take the off cuts? And they'd, they were very only too happy that I took the off cuts away. And they often had uh, bendy pieces as well that they weren't using that had also been tossed. And then I could create a lovely creation for the cat to climb on and stand on and, and have fun with. Just using thick rope, um, to uh, or thick twine wound round and round very tightly and that made a wonderful scratching climbing post for the cats. Now other toys that the cats might like to play with are whoopsie I've just made a mini one here where I've made a box and I put the bells inside the box. And uh, this is a, a bell, this one's a, just a ball. And then the cat, you do a big one and the cat then can play with it and, and swing it and make it go up and down. And you can do it with bottle tops. They love brightly colored bottle tops. Those are awesome as far as they're concerned. You can also take feathers and put them into a cork. All you do is soak the cork for about 20 minutes. And then when the cork is soaked, they then, it's very easy to make a hole. I used um, just a, a, what did I, oh, I used a screwdriver. I just stuck the screwdriver into it. Um, and then I was able to stick in my feathers. And they love that. You can also attach another hook this side and hang it and then the feathers hang in the breeze. Unfortunately with dogs they might eat those feathers quite quickly so that is not such a good idea for dogs. Using your old socks are amazing tools for animals to play with. Both dogs and cats like socks. Cats like a sock that's got catnip in it. Dogs like one with a ball or they just like socks. I have one dog who's been a sock fanatic ever since he was born. Even if it's hanging out of the washing machine, he'll take it and hide it and then munch on it. So we have to be very careful with our socks. Otherwise, they are 
gone and you just don't have a hope with them. Now, I know that both of you are dog people, so I'm moving fairly fast through the cats to get to the dogs for you, particularly for you, Grisha, because I know you are really tired today. All right, the last of the cat things are anything that hangs. Hanging things are wonderful. Uh, they love to hang anything and everything uh, from, from a window, from a doorknob, uh, and then putting something in water. Now, this I used for dogs as well. I made, I, I just took an old tray that was around, it was actually, I think, a plant tray, put some water into it, and then used tea candles, the, old, the leftover part of a tea candle. Um, I also used uh, any kind of plastic lids that I had, and I put a couple of pellets into it, and then I floated it in the water. Now, the dogs didn't take too long to work out that they could reach across and grab and take it out, but the cat spent hours trying to get it to the edge and trying to help it out. They want, they want that food that is in there, or a little bauble, one of these... Um, over there. One of these inside there is also awesome to use with it. And then they spend ages digging for it and looking for it. And again, using your feathers, hanging your feathers, hanging them off a, a tube, you've got them and they are amazing to work with. So there's a lot of things that just from what you have around, you can make. I went out and, and bought a few bells so that I could make things that rattled, but you can also find, um, buy some with balls and then turn them into something different. Now, this is wonderful. Both cats and dogs love something that is long. Let me stop sharing for a second. Ah, uh, right. Then here we are. We've got this is I've taken not a toilet roll, but a roller towel roll. And I've cut holes in it at different parts. I've put milk bottle tops on either end. And what you do is you take the food and put it in. Make sure that the holes are not too big, but also not too small. And then you put it on the ground. The, uh, the cat or the dog push it along and as it turns, so some food comes out. And they, this is a wonderful thing for them. They then eat that little piece of food. Now they want some more. So they push it a bit further and they push it around until such time as more food falls out. And this give, gives them hours of enjoyment. Both dogs and cats love this. My two little um, French bulldogs really enjoy playing with this and getting their food out. They don't actually destroy the container because the food is coming out at a regular thing. And when I see it's close to the end, then I take it away so that I don't have to find another one. And then a few days later, I will give it to them again. And as soon as they see it, their eyes light up. I've got one for each of them. And then because the little girl is more dominant than the boy, he's very passive and he lets her have all the food. So I, I keep them so they've each got their own. And they really enjoy playing with it and having fun. Anybody got any questions about that so far? Ah. Hi, Carmen. Well, Lovely to have you. I, I do have a, a, a question or two, if I could. Now, yes. um, I'm thinking the sock idea. I really like that. Um, is a tennis ball too big to put in for a no. little for, for a little dog? I, I found some smaller than tennis balls for a small dog. Um, these are, are squishy balls. Um, oh, that's and a better I put idea. That, yeah, I put Where that you, inside. And then do you make knots at either end? Is that what you've got yeah, there? That's a knot. All I've done is knotted it and pulled. And where and do you knot. buy the little squishies? Where, I, I, I got it at the dollar shop. You get a bag oh. of about six or eight of them in, a, in, in the bag. 
And really? uh, okay. yeah. Oh, good. That would be better um, than a tennis ball. And yeah, a what, tennis ball can be a bit hard. Right. Too hard for, and they, a lot, my little ones don't have too many teeth, but that's a, that's a great idea. Um, the other thing is you showed in the beginning several things for dogs. What was the first? Can you refresh? Do you remember the first item you showed? I, I'm, I want... still, I'm still coming to dogs. Uh, those were mainly for cats. But let me show you the no, one no. was you, this, no, the ball. No, I, no, no. I'm talking about with the toilet roll. You yeah. had some. Yes, that. Is that oh, the thing okay. you're talking about? No, you had something I thought. At either end of a, uh, the first item you showed, but if you back. let's go back, it's so much easier. And then you can uh, you can t ask. Uh, let me just zoom back with that. Um, two, three, four. I just I don't there. want you don't waste. No, no, no! You're not wasting time at all. This is a this is a, a time for us to share. So I'm only too happy. This was the one I was working with toilet rolls. And was there anything for a dog with the toilet yes. rolls? What yes, was there, there, what there I... was this. Yeah, this ball. Oh, okay. okay. That you can put food inside it. You okay. Put food inside this ball, and it works really well for them. They they really do enjoy trying to get the food out of it. Now, I've opened – hang on, stop sharing for a second so you can see. Uh, I've opened my sock. And that is the squishy ball. Um, I, you find it in the, where the children's play things are. Oh, um, okay. Uh, in fact, I think these were part of party party favors the children can oh. get after a party. Oh. Oh, and then okay. that was what I found. And it's soft. It's a soft. That so would be for your perfect. chihuahua and the yeah, ones, right. the little ones now, this would be perfect. I and think then you're you can, right. You can then, you just put it inside, push it to the middle or as close to the middle as you kind of can get. And then you just tie a knot. Easy, mm. easy. I need something easy. That's simple, perfect. Simple, simple, simple. Mm. Very, very easy. There's another lovely idea coming up that your dogs will enjoy as well. Good. It'll be coming up in a second. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> no, only a pleasure. Anytime. Uh, it's lovely to interact and to be able to c come up and share ideas. Um, all right, let's continue. We've finished our scratching posts. And now we are, this one, for your cats, you put the fingers up in through it and they grab your fingers. And for feeding, you can, this the dogs can also do. You join toilet rolls together in a pyramid. So three at the bottom, then two, then one. And you just put tape around them. And then inside, near the middle, you put some dog food or cat food. And now they will put their paws, they will push it, they will feel it, they will try and get that food out of there. And so that is another lovely one for dogs and cats, is getting food out of the toilet rolls. They then take some my dog's about 20 minutes to work out how to actually uh, get it. Eventually, Bear, the, uh, the boy, he pushes it on its end. And then when it's upside down, then all the food falls out. And then he just eats away at his food. He's, he's worked that one out. Um, but they, they do have a lot of fun. It keeps them occupied uh, doing it. The other one that both cats and dogs, you'll see in the dogs will be doing it, is to put a bottle onto to a dowel stick you just have to get, get a dowel stick you get those in the the craft shops and the the dollar stores as well and you can put the dowel stick into two bottles into anything just so that it can turn and then you put a bottle filled with food on it but leave the lid off now what they do is they push it with their paw and it goes round and some falls out. And when they've eaten, then they push it with their paw again. It goes round and they learn that trick very quickly. And so they are able to get their food. They have to work a little for their food in order to get it. Uh, and so, Carmen, do you have cats or dogs? Uh, 
Okay, Karen's not not good. Both. Um, both. You got you got both. Okay, perfect. So there, here are some ideas for both your cats and your dogs. Right now, we're moving on to games for cats and dogs. These are awesome ideas. You can see the little dogs helping themselves. We're using this particular one, which we had before. And then we've got one, another one I'll show you in a minute. These are the ones that we were looking at where you roll it and with the holes in it and it just twists and out comes the food. So you've got it, you've, you've got your food coming out at regular intervals, able to be seen and able to be fed. Um, they love it. They enjoy doing it. You'll see I've got pictures just now of my two little ones playing with it. The last way is to take a toilet roll. Where's a plain toilet roll? Yes, I've got one plain toilet roll down here. You take a toilet roll and you take some newspaper or magazine paper and you just fold it like a, like a fan or concertina backwards and forwards. And then you push food into that and put it inside the toilet roll. So the food is quite tightly stuck in there. And then they've got to work a way of getting it out. So that is another lovely one. Dogs and cats can play with it. Um, just if you've got cats and dogs, I would put them in different places. Otherwise, the dog will take the cat's one when he's finished or she's finished. Because they often finish quicker than the cats. The cats enjoy the, the, the chase more than the food. So they will take their time doing it. But they are, are just such a lovely array of things that you can do with your cats and your dogs. Right. <clears throat> Let me just move this out of the way. Oops, there we go. Right. Now looking at your dogs. There are super ideas to do with dogs. Taking your old clothes particularly pajama pants are great because you get a long strip. It's a longer strip than um, using a t-shirt. And all you do is you plait it. You can plait it in different colors, same color. Um, and you plait the different pieces together and you can make it one straight plait. You can make it a plait that divides open. Hi, Stacy. lovely to have you. Uh, you can plait it in all ways. Uh, yes, hi, Stace. <laughs> uh, so, hi, Sue. nice to have you in class again. <laughs> Thank you. All right, have you got dogs or cats? I, I have a dog. You have a love dog. Of, eh? Love of my life. <laughs> Well, here are a whole lot of doggy ideas for you then. Great. All right. You can take, you as we just spoke about earlier, taking either a tennis ball if the dogs are big or if the dogs are small, the little squishy balls that make it easier for them. Tie your sock together either end and they can then pull. Um, what I do with my two, they like to pull against me. So sometimes I actually attach my the one end of the sock to something, the, the end of, of a, um, something in the garden, and then they I stand behind it and they pull and they pull because they can actually pull really hard. And so I, I make a, an extra, a way of, of attaching it at the end and then just stand there. They think it's me and they can then pull on it and it works very nicely indeed. Right. So now we also, you can make it with rope. You can buy rope, a thicker rope, and you actually knot the rope together. And there are many places on Pinterest that show you the easy way to knot. But I find just plaiting works wonders. And you can also make a little donut for your, for your dog. You take um, a circle of material to a uh, two circles of material, and you just sew them together, leaving a little hole at the top. You can then stuff it with um, any kind of stuffing, uh, even plastic bags, soft plastic bags make a lovely stuffing to go inside. And then once it's sewn together, you grab the middle and you stitch the middle together so that it makes a donut. 
and they really enjoy the little dogs love to play with something like that. They have their donut to play. Um, it's just um, my, my, my two love a donut. They wander around with that and they, their bone that I give them as well. They've got a donut or a bone so they can, can do what they need to do. Now, are there any questions about how to make any of those? Anybody got a question? Anybody going to try making those? Something that's different to make for your for your pets? Well, I'm definitely the, I'm not handy at all. So I'm going to go for the sock with the with the squishy balls, and I'm going to have to go tomorrow to the dollar store and 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 get those. So. Thank you. Yeah. No, it's a pleasure. But you can also try with your toilet rolls because those are very easy to make. You don't have to be handy to, to make those. Um, they, they work exceptionally well um, with what, what we are doing. All right. Now, here is another form of pulling for dogs. Take, say, take material, cut it into thin strips. And then stuff the thin strips, join them together, and stuff them in a plastic bottle, leaving just a piece hanging out. Um, and at the what I do at the bottom of the bottle, I put some dog food, so they can smell the dog food at the other end. Now they start pulling on this thread, and they at first they can't get it out because the bottle comes with it and then they put their paw on and they hold it and now they start trying to pull the thread out and they slowly but surely pull out the thread and at the end once it's out they they then fiddle with the bottle and out come in fact uh, I sometimes put some of the dog food in between the thread as I'm putting it. So when they pull it out, dog food comes out at different times with the thread. And they, they really enjoy that. It takes them quite a long time to do that. Um, and that, that is a lot of fun. Uh, you can also just take bits of fabric and put them either in a box or just in a bundle on the floor and underneath the fabric you put the dog biscuits now they they push their way through the fabric they try and find their way through they can smell it and they find their way through the fabric and then find their biscuits at the bottom or in amongst the fabric that again keeps them occupied for quite some time they are able to, I, I I was amazed just how long it took them to fiddle and find all the pieces. You know, they'll find one piece and then, oh, they can smell another one. Now they're back in again. They're looking for the next one and then, oh, yeah, another one. And they go through with that. You, you also have, um, you can tie for the bigger dogs. You can tie um, a, a tire in a tube of a bicycle around your stand that you have your umbrella for summer in or anything that is really firm and then they can pull on that and they can pull as much as they want on that uh, you can stand behind they think you they're pulling against you and uh, then they really do yank and pull on that and they they have a lot of fun doing it you can plait a rope uh, just with bits of fabric uh, that they and make a hole at the you you, you plait and have a double plait going up so you start with two two and two so you've got three lots of two and you do your plaiting and then what you can do after that is to open it up and then plait two 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 just one 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 up to the top and make a knot at the top or work the other way around but there's lots of fun ways that you can plait things together uh, and that makes a lovely pulley for the animals. Any questions for that as dog games? Anybody got any ideas? Anybody like to try any of those ideas? I know Natalie can't yet. She hasn't got her puppy yet. Uh, Carmen, are there any of those that you could use? Uh, yes, uh, I'll go for the simple ones until they learn how to use them. Are you going to send us the pictures? So uh, no, 
what what you do is you ask for a, a copy of the recording. There are some pictures. I do send you some of the ideas. Yes, I send you a, an email with an attachment. It's got quite a lot of the ideas on it. Good. Okay, so that that yes, we do have that uh, to remind you because there are quite a lot of ideas here for you to think about. Now, dog food games. These are great. If you look on the right-hand side, those are my two little Muttleys, both my little French bulldogs. Believe it or not, they're brother and sister. One is much smaller than the other, little Lacey, and Bear is a much bigger dog uh, than, than Lace. And what I did was we made this very, and, and this is so, so simple. You take a toilet roll. So I'm going to take a whole brand new one. You Stop sharing. Right, you take a toilet roll and all you do is squash the toilet roll in half. That's all you have to do is squash it in half. I've now got a flat toilet roll. Now, open it up and all you do is push on this top. It automatically goes inwards. And you do the same on the other side. Now you've got a closed container. I put the dog food in the top and I push it closed again. Closed from one side. Clo Oops, it's not quite as closed as it should be. Just give it an extra push and push from this side. Now my dog food is encased in a little container. Uh, just make sure your bits stay closed. There we go. So I have now made my container. I can open it up, which I've done here, in order to put the food in and then close it again, ready to think. That's what I made for them. There it's closed at the end. Now, my two little ones, I gave it to them. It took them about 20 minutes in order to get it to, to get into it. Bear didn't destroy his. He managed to get his out and I could use his container again. Lacey, on the other hand, decided it was quicker and easier to bite it open and get what she wanted inside. And But both of them thoroughly enjoyed playing with their toilet roll holders. And it's such a simple thing to build. Uh, very easy to make indeed. Um, that uh, Grisha, you would definitely be able to make that. Uh, you can also take a tennis ball and cut it on the the white part of it, the the, the sort of the, the marking. You cut along the marking. And just cut a small hole, put the food inside. This is more for slightly bigger dogs because they've got to be able to bite that ball. When they bite the ball, it opens and out falls the food and they are able to have it. So that I would say is more for a bigger dog. You can do a small snuffle. Remember, I had a big snuffle on the floor. You can make a small snuffle box where they can snuffle in it and find their biscuits in it. They really enjoy doing that. And you can also take um, a, a triangle of cardboard. Um, have I got a triangle here? I did have one. Um, okay, I haven't got a triangle. I'll just make this into a triangle sharing. Um, you can use paper plates or anything like that. You make a triangle, not a very straight triangle, this one, because I was doing it in a hurry. That's close enough to a triangle. Then what you do is you put the food inside the middle and you close up all the corners together. You pull up all your corners and fold them over. They don't have to be tightly closed. And then you put those into an egg box. They've got the food inside and some of them do and some of them don't. And then the dog's got to work out which ones have the food in and he gets a reward or she gets a reward. And some of them don't have any food in them. When they open them, there isn't food. So then they learn to smell very much more accurately and just choose the ones that have the dog food in. Uh, and that I found very interesting. It took a while for my dogs to work that one out. Uh, and the look of disappointment when they opened it and there was nothing there. They sort of looked at me to say, 
huh, where's the food? And I said, go, go look again. And then they would go back in and they would find one with food. But that also kept them occupied for quite some time. Uh, the cat one I showed you with the bottle, this is the dog version of it. Putting a dowel stick between two planks of wood or um, you can also use, if you've got little dogs and you use a little container, bricks with the holes in them. Uh, put bricks up and then use those to rest the, the dowel stick in. And then as they hit the bottle, so the bottle goes round and out comes the food, which again, is a lovely reward for them. So there are lots of nice ideas there, I hope. Anybody got any questions? Um, how do you start them playing? How do you start? You play with them. You play with them. You actually uh, pretend to be a dog with them and you start showing them how to do it. And you don't have to show very off, very long, just one or two shows and suddenly they, the, the sort of penny drops and then they try for themselves. Um, with the one with the bottle, I actually took my dog's paw and I pushed the paw against it. And I only had to do that twice and he tweaked to it. And then I walked away and he sat and he looked at it and then he touched it and touched it a bit too softly and then gave it a hard push because it wasn't doing it and over it went and out came the food and as soon as they've got it once they know exactly they're very clever creatures dogs so are cats make no mistake they are both very very clever so you've got all your different ones right now we've got joe oh before i just do that um uh gisha did you get some ideas for your dog yeah, yes, I did. Thank you for asking. Uh, and I'm surprised you're still with us because I, I actually expected you to drop out after about five uh, minutes. <laughs> well, I, I, I was afraid I'd miss something. I figure if I get one or two ideas for my little ones here, I'll be happy. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not, um, I, 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 I knit and, and crochet, you know, things like that but I'm not handy when it comes to seeing something over the internet like this. I have to actually sit with the person and have them show me once, but I have a few ideas and that satisfies me. Oh, fantastic. Well, you know what you can do, Gisha, is when you ask for a copy of the uh, from of, of this um, lesson, you can actually... What the things that we I've made with you, you can actually stop it and then do the first bit, stop it, do right. the second part. Right. And so you can, it, so it's almost as if we are doing it together. Thank and you. So you, and any time that you want to ask, you can always ask questions through Help It Get Set Up. They then send the questions to me and I can answer you. So there's always a way of being able to, to interact and, and to get more information. But I do send ideas along after the, after the class as well. Thank so you. You've got them to, to be Thank able you. to use. But I'm delighted you were able to stay with us so long. Um, I, I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it, well, I'm beautiful. enjoying it. Oh, if, that's, I can, that's, if, if I can think of one or two little ideas for my little little ones here that that's enough you know i'd rather get one or two good ideas than too much and i'm definitely going to try one or two of them awesome that is my aim my aim from this class is exactly that even if you find only one that you like that's then you right. can do it from there and that's that right. is awesome Excellent. i agree Thank I you agree. so much for being part of the class. It really has been a pleasure having you with us. And thank uh, you. Thank you for having the class. And I want to know what other classes um, that, that you're heading up or what's on the agenda for you because you're um, a del delightful person. Well, we're changing a lot of things. I did a lot of crafty classes and grandchildren classes, and now um, we're shelving those for a while. I'm doing a movie night quiz on um, Thursday, and I'm doing a um, 
uh, what do you call it, a, a, like a coffee hour, social hour on birds in my garden on Friday. Oh, no. Um, and uh, tomorrow I've got board and busters for seniors, all sorts of ideas um, as board and busters for seniors. That's one of the ones tomorrow. I normally have two classes a day. Um, and then as, so that so there are lots of different ones for you to be able to see and do. And then I do animal ones, ones on animals of Africa, animals of Australia and encounters with wild animals. Oh, so there is there are. There are a variety, a variety of uh, classes are, are available. I'll check them out. Thank you. Excellent. All right. Now, for those of you who've got the smaller pets, the gerbils or the hamsters, there are lots of fun things you can build for them using corrugated card and using toilet rolls. You can make a um, beautiful little mazes for them to climb through and I would put some food in the different mazes so that they've got different things to go look for in different rooms and that that could keep them going for a very long time you can also attach their food on a long string and then they can choose what they would like to eat at different times um, and you can make them a jungle gym as such where they can climb over and under and through all out of cardboard. So there's lots to be able to build there. For the parrots and any other bird, uh, we have parrots outdoors. So we're very, very fortunate. Um, when I lived in South Africa, if you saw a parrot, you thought, oh, where's that escaped from? Here we have the most amazing parrots that live in the trees and come down to my bird feeder. Um, and so for your birds, for your parrots, you can again make different types of containers. For outdoors, I've put fruit uh, into uh, oranges for them. They love it. They go and have a, a, a uh, put that up in the bird feeder so they really do enjoy looking for food finding food uh, and I'm thinking of making one or two of these and hanging them from an arch that I've got in the garden and seeing if some of them might come and feed from that not sure yet whether they will but you never know they may uh, right thank you everyone any questions before we start Stop. Uh, let me just thank you for being here. And of course, uh, any people who've got pictures of things you've made, please send them to Liz at getsetup.io and then she can send them to me and I would love to include them in my presentation, things that people have made. Um, I have got one in the garden where somebody had used some of their toilets out in the garden with plants. And wow, what a beautiful thing it is. And I've included that in my, my upcycling garden. Um, and then you're also going to get your class notes. There will be some ideas of other classes. Unfortunately, they are randomly generated and sometimes they are nothing to do with what I do. But um, if you just look for my name, when you go into Get Set Up, you can type my name in it at the top and all my classes will come up and you'll be able to see when and where they are. The ones on Thursday and Friday, I'm not sure if they're up yet. They will go up during today, hopefully, if they are not. Um, you will also get a feedback session if you'd like to comment, like to say how you enjoyed or what you'd like from something new for the class, please feel free to add and put whatever you would like. It helps get set up to know what you would like and so that we can have them for you. And what time is your Friday class? Um, my Friday class, uh, I'll, as soon as I stop sharing, I'll be able to tell you exactly what time they are. Um, we, if you want to, when you book, you can invite a friend to join you. And if there's anybody you know that would like to join Get Set Up, th their link is help at Get Set Up. Right, I can stop sharing now and let me find you the time. Hold on one second. Uh, I need to just find a spot and then I'll be able to. There we go. Um, let me go into here. Um, has that come up yet? No. Okay, it doesn't look as if Thursday and Friday are up yet, but I'll tell you when they are because I do have them, my schedule. Here it is. Um, 
my schedule says that they are Thursday at 10, 10 o'clock, same time as today, uh, is my movie trivia. So it's how to all to do with the movies of our era, not the modern movies, and what how many people can remember actors and actresses. And it's a trivia quiz, and it's going to be hopefully a lot of fun. And on Friday, uh, also at 10, the same time as today, are birds in my backyard. Tomorrow, I've got um, Board and Busters for Seniors is at 8 o'clock, so it will be two hours earlier than today's class. And at 10 o'clock, I've got interesting animals around the world. I've got African animals, the, the lesser known African animals. Uh, and then too late for some of you, midnight for some of you, Board and Busters for kids. So those are the classes that are up for this week at the moment are going to be up uh, Thursday and Friday aren't up yet please just look for them I'm sure they'll come up shortly right anything anybody would like to say before we close what time is it where you are uh, it's 11 o'clock in the morning <laughs> I'm in I'm in Perth Australia so we are ahead of you um, by sometimes up to 12 hours whereabouts are you Carmen Puerto Rico and what time are you there uh, it's uh, 10 uh, almost, let's see almost 11 10, almost 10. it okay so you're 12 hours behind me so um, the, the times would be 10 o'clock tomorrow night and uh, 10 o'clock Thursday night, 10 o'clock Friday night, the same as, as now. So that's why it looks so fresh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's early morning for me. Uh, when I finish teaching at midnight, I'm usually quite tired because I, I work uh, teaching English in the evenings. And um, so uh, and then I'm not so chirpy <laughs> as I am, am now. But thank you, everyone, so much for being part of the class. It's awesome when you all take part and talk. Natalie, I hope you get a puppy. I hope so, too. <laughs> what sort of puppy are you looking for? Are you thinking I, of getting? I really don't know. I've been looking. I, I don't know. I don't know. But I just want a, I just want a small dog. I don't want nothing big. Mm. Um, if, if I were to choose again, I would probably go for a corgi because they are the most sweet natured little creatures. They really oh. are. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I, I would choose. I actually acquired my, my, my two in a divorce and it wasn't my divorce. So I, I, I acquired these two little dogs from, from, from that and I'm only too happy to have them. Um, yeah. And uh, so they, they live very happily with me. They're fast asleep behind me. No. Can, I just, can I just mention one thing? I'm mm. a, a big, I like to always go to a rescue um, and that's where I've gotten my dogs and all my family have gone to rest, rescue places. My son has three dogs, two of which are um, um, tripods, they call them, just three legs. They've mm -hmm. lost their fourth in an accident. And also mm -hmm. we, in, in New Mexico, where I live, we have a big foundation for that only takes in blind and and deaf. I'm not recommending it. I'm just saying a rescue is a wonderful idea. Uh, always. I've had rescue dogs. Thanks for I've sharing it. Mm. Rescue dogs, and they are so so loving and so appreciative, the, the rescue dogs. They really are. They've, they've had a rough time. That's and now, right. they, now they're in a safe place and they, you know, they don't judge. They just love you for who you are. And they that, just, that yeah. to me is, is awesome. Mm -hmm. So give some thought to that. It's very worthwhile. Thanks. They love you and they and you love them and you get a lot back from them. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, well, I, I believe in it and I wish you lots of good luck. Next time, maybe you'll say, look what I have. And you'll mm -hmm. lift up a little. <laughs> Bundle of joy. Right, yes. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, yes. Also, the employees there, I can tell you, you can tell them what you want and they can help you by guiding you into the perfect match. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, there hmm. we are, Natalie. Another idea. Excellent. Okay. So you've got lots of new ideas. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, oh, wonderful. Well, thank you, everyone. I, I hope you've enjoyed tonight for you and day for me. And I look forward to seeing all of you again sometime. I Have look a great forward evening. to. Thank you very Bye. much. Bye. Bye. Bye.